Hi there, welcome back. In this lecture, we are going to learn about Azure Virtual Machines High Availability. So first thing first, before we jump into High Availability options, I wanted to focus on three key things. The first one is where we are going to use these outreach scenarios and how best we can go for high availability management. And there are also a little bit of differences in the, within the out teach scenarios which we are going to discuss within this slide and the second one we are going to look at how Microsoft is offering a highly available global infrastructure for us in terms of highly available for your virtual machines and finally some of the principles are general rules which we are going to discuss even though Microsoft is offering a global scalable and globally high available virtual machine configurations it doesn't mean that you know you have everything is uh, readily available for you you need to do a little bit of configurations you need to go and follow some kind of general principles so that's where the general rules comes into it and we're going to discuss on that so let's have a look on outages scenarios and when what type of outages that we can expect the first one definitely unplanned when we talk about unplanned it could be unintentionally outage that could you know caused by your hardware or software failure and also if you are trying to understand about the planned outages we can talk about microsoft planned outages or maybe you are doing some kind of a software update or maybe a software maintenance or maybe hardware outages as a planned that all can be done uh, as a planned outages so these are the things uh, comes in the planned and unplanned and also generally for the unplanned outages you will not have any notice or you will not have any information that hey this is going to be unplanned because that's an accidental thing or that could be a unplanned purely right and when it is a planned yes you get the uh, notification and you can check the service health within the Microsoft as your portal or you can check the schedule events or you can you yourself when you're trying to upgrade your one version of your virtual machine series to another high available then it goes down so you know that it's going to be planned or maybe you are doing the software update Update, so you know that this software is gonna gets updated so you are taking as the outages so these are the outages that we need to you know think about when we talk about the high availability as the next thing I'm going to talk about the Microsoft global infrastructure that's the second point which we wanted to consider which we wanted to talk on it so when it comes to the global infrastructure Microsoft offers a few couple of the things the first thing first uh, Microsoft has a region so when we talk about a region or when we create a virtual machines or other Azure resources we have to select a location so it's it's a common thing that you know either you are going to use a specific location that might be Australia or Southeast or maybe Singapore on which location you might be uh, building your resources uh, within that specific location or region so for Microsoft uh, perspective from the Microsoft perspective we are actually talking about a region they use a terminology called a region so they don't uh, uh, say that you know the country name but they have their own region names like East US West US or South Asia or Singapore as a different uh, name for their regions and each of these uh, regions are uh, very well connected with uh, within a defined latency and uh, it's very well connected a dedicated network and dedicated data center within that region and uh, when we talk about a different availability zones within that region you might have more than two different uh, availability zones let's say at least the three in this case if you see here the east location so each of them has a we can say that a data center so you have three data centers and they are uh, connected with very well uh, connected uh, network with the given distance so it could be a some hundreds miles of distance so that if something goes wrong to these uh, region one uh, within this availability zone one uh, other two will be available so it's not going to be a failure of any of the region directly so that's how they come up and they say that hey I have my region is still available even though you lost the availability zone one that's how they're going to talk and also coming back to the physical in infrastructure 
so it's a unique physical location within the Azure region, which will help you to you know protect data center failures. That's how um, we talked about the availability zone in the region. So creating the virtual machine, uh, and when we try to create, you know, where region comes. So if you try to create any of the virtual machine uh, by going to the virtual machine and creating, you can actually choose here the option of the region. So this is what the region. So region is a right for you to you know for the customers where you need to choose the nearest region for your solution so that your customers can access uh, without any latency that's how you can choose it so you have a different uh, regions if you see here if I just click on here so different regions are available here like Europe and Asia and Canada US so different things you have here and also Microsoft recommends some of the uh, globally scalable uh, regions that have higher scope than other regions to expand. So they also recommend that and apart from that you would actually get it as a other so where you can choose different resources here. So that's how it will be. So now uh, if I create here any of the virtual machine, I would, you know, just go to the region and also I'll say that this is my region. So what happens is all this virtual machine specific components all will be saved in that specific region. So that's how it's going to work. Let's also have a look on the availability options. So when you click on availability, apart from the region, uh, availability is available uh, with the two options. One is the availability zone, other one would be the availability set. When we create availability set for the high availability purpose, you're going to actually focus on two key, two key components or two key architecture design thing. The first one would be the fault domain, other one would be the update domain. So the last one update domain is nothing but if your uh, Windows machine is scheduled for the Windows updates, if it is going for going to be a restart your application will you know definitely not available as the high available so in that situation so this machine is going offline just for the windows update so the solution goes completely offline for your end users to protect that you have an option called update domain so if you specify uh, you know five that means the five virtual machines will be running as a replica in the backend if one goes down other one will be always available for you so that's the update uh, domain and other one would be the fall domain so for your power source as well as the network it's going to be uh, connected in a high available mode in such a way like uh, when you're deploying on a server it's not going to be in the same rack and uh, it would be deployed in a multiple racks like you know power connected source might be coming from a south grid and uh, another uh, grid maybe a north grid also power source is connected so if some something goes wrong with the uh, south grid even though you your mission will be connected with the north region power grids in a such a way it's going to design similarly the physical networking switches also in a such a way it's going to design which we are going to discuss all these uh, skate set options in the upcoming lectures but for now you uh, if you want to you know, go through you can go through this uh, high availability link which is going to talk about the zone 1 zone 2 zone 3 also uh, you know fd and ud that's the uh, fault domain fd means and ud means update domain so if something goes wrong in s such a way they can you know deploy so that you are getting high availability in terms of the uh, power failure or virtual machine failure because it's going to be a cluster computer altogether so that's the uh, that's the uh, a small overview on the scale set about the uh, about the high availability option and if you choose the other option like availability zones so you can choose here either zone 1 or zone 2 zone 3 so that what happens is if within that uh, specific zone the physical public IP address as well as the managed disk will be available and it gets replicated for other availability zones so that you are applications are available or the virtual machine is available from another uh, availability zone also and just to uh, mention that these availability zones as well as the scale sets is not available in all the regions let's say if I just scroll down and choose Europe uh, I will not have this you know zone for the availability zones but I do have for the availability set and I can straightforward go ahead and create for the availability sets but not the availability zones similarly uh, 
if I just go to maybe Canada, it might be available, but if I choose something else, it might not be available. The reason being they have not yet uh, scaled their global infrastructure aid, but they might be doing the similar thing uh, with which is available with, uh, for example, uh, these regions which has uh, the availability sets as well as the availability zones. Similar things might you know come up in the upcoming uh, days. So as of this recording so that specific region does not have but we never know if they are going to you know scope up and scale up actually so we talked about the creation of the virtual machine uh, for a region we can choose the closest region and make sure for the high availability if you're choosing high availability you need to know about the availability zone and availability set so availability set talks about the a fault domain and update domain which talks about nothing but a maintenance of a regular maintenance or unplanned outages of a power grid or maybe networking components failover so then you would be actually choosing the availability set and the entire virtual machine to be you know, available then we are going to choose the availability zone with a specific to one to three zones where the primary availability of your virtual machine should be available and it gets replicated as we talked in the previous uh, lectures like this zone 1 to zone 2 zone 3 it's gonna replicate automatically for you uh, but you have to specify so that's what we have uh, discussed here so you need to specify uh, you need to design in such a way the architecture that it's gonna address all the planned and unplanned outages uh, so that you you are actually utilizing the Microsoft global infrastructure and let's jump into the PPT uh, from this demo now let's talk about the uh, a solution like you know you might be deployed a virtual machine and that virtual machine might have a backend database so user is trying to access this virtual machine if this virtual machine as a front end is available the user can really able to access and this solution is deployed maybe in this specific region called East US. So that's good, but uh, it's not really, uh, if you think about is this a really highly available virtual machine, uh, definitely it is not the case. The reason being either Microsoft has their own high availability options, but we didn't use any of them. It's like you spin up a virtual machine on your one dedicated Hyper-V uh, and uh, it's working fine but you know what happen of course they take care about the networking all that you know high availability uh, those things are taken care by Microsoft but if the mission itself goes down for some reason your application is not really a uh, highly available so that's the problem so how do we address that so we need to you know think about the uh, not just the uh, one virtual machine we need to you know think about uh, three different components also one would be the service redundancy highly available requires a redundancy uh, for your services that's what we are talking about now for the highly availability for service redundancy and also the traffic which is coming um, here so that needs to be you know, distributed um, properly by using some of the core components which are available within Microsoft Azure as a resource uh, like application gateway or load balancer in fact we have a detailed lectures on these and the different uh, different section altogether you can check out those uh, lectures but we're just trying to you know pinch out uh, you know what kind of uh, uh, traffic or what kind of things we can you know consider in terms of the gender rules as a gender principle to make our virtual machines are high availability I think you can here what you can do is you can actually distribute the traffic by using maybe application gateway or maybe a load balancer to other virtual machines in the back end which has similar web app or maybe as a uh, mirrored virtual machines or maybe scale sets so you can actually scale in other ways so these are the options that you have and also you have the final one resource management so this includes our complete health of this virtual machine what went wrong and why it's not uh, responding or maybe CPU spike or maybe data accessed within the disk is high 
or maybe networking is high all that you can actually find out by using the monitoring solutions within Microsoft Azure so all these things are available uh, in terms of the virtual machine high availability and you can choose these things I hope this lecture is really useful for you thank you for watching this and I'll catch you in the next lecture thank you